So now I've shown you how to save some data to the PARS database. Let's talk about how to retrieve some data, how to edit some, an existing row, and then how to delete a row. And then finally, how to create relationships between one record, one instance, and another instance in PARS. So let's start off with retrieving in, in, in its most basic sense. We're going to cover the more complex use case of retrieving data via queries, via questions that you ask of your database in the next section. But if you know the ID of an instance that you want to load, you can retrieve it really easily with the function get. Now when doing any retrieval work, you have to actually use a feature or another type in PARS called query. So I would typically do varq for query is equal to pars query and then we give it the name of the class that we want to run the query on. So we want to run a query on the post class or the post table. And then we can say q.get and you can pass in the ID of the post that we want to load. And since we've created one here, we can do post.id. But if you remember, at this point here, the ID isn't set because this just is an asynchronous function and just kicks it off. So what will happen is this will start the saving process and move straight away down to this line. And at this point, we don't actually have the ID. We have the ID in the success callback here. So let's move the query code into there. Okay, this just kicks off the retrieval process. It doesn't actually wait for the data to get returned from the server. It just makes a request to the server to return data. So the same as save, we need to pass in some callbacks so that we can get notified when the data gets returned from the parse server. So the same, exactly the same as parse, we pass in an object and we give it a success handler. Oh, spelt it wrong function, let's call it post, and then again, error, function, oh, let's call it object, in fact, let's call this object as well, okay, let's just log this error here again, clean this up a bit there, so now in this success handler, Let's just print out ID. So we're going to save and create a post object. Once we know that that post object has been saved and it's returned to as in the to ourselves in the client, we then create a parse query object, a queue. We then say queue.get and then the ID of the post that we want to retrieve. And then again in the success handler for that, we're just going to log the ID. So really, I should expect the. Actually, in fact, let me call it. Instead of that, we successfully got object ID, just so we can see the two log lines clearly in the console. So now let's clear and hit run. Oh, and I seem to have another error. And oh, I know what it is. I didn't use a new keyword. I apologize about that. So it should be var q is equal to new parse query post. So let me try that one more time. Okay. Finally got it working, so there we go. So now we've got successfully saved and successfully got. So that's one way in which you can retrieve data from PARS if you have the ID of the object that you want to retrieve. So editing this post is just exactly the same as what you did to save it. So we can do, again, there's the various mechanisms for saving. I'm gonna use the set function here right now. I said body, this is an updated message let's give us some room but we can also have other functions that we can use so we can perhaps do object dot increment num comments if you remember num comments is a number so what this will do is whatever that number is it will add one to it so that's one way we can update or edit an object we can also add something to a tags list so let's add to the tags um, updated post and in fact objects in PARS have a bunch of these different methods that you can use to edit them 
Now the best way to find out the full set of details if you go to pars.com slash docs and then you can see there's quite a few different client libraries for here. Right now we're going through the JavaScript client library so then you can go to the API reference and these are all the different classes in pars and we're going to go to the pars object then you can see at the bottom there's a different methods you can have. So I've shown you add, but there's also add unique, there's increment, and there's quite a few other functions there as well. well. We'll be going through a few more of these, but we won't be going through all of them. So I do recommend that once you get a little bit more used to PARS and, and a little, little bit more comfortable with it, to definitely go through the API documentation and just give it a once over. Even if it's just, just to have a quick look at the different methods that are available just have a read of them. You don't even have to dig into them. Just have a read of them. Let them sink in for a little bit. Because later on when you're trying to write some code, maybe something will pop up in your head and you'll go back into the API documentation and realize that maybe that class will already have a function that you need. So I do recommend just to have a quick read through the API documentation. You don't have to read it in detail, even if you just have a quick scan through the names of the methods. That's enough. So now let's go back into the JS bin. So now that we've got all these data set, let's just call object.save again. And again, just like before, we can add in success handlers, we go, and error handlers. And let's just copy and paste that there. And again, successfully edited so there we go okay so now let's clear this console run again oh, refresh the page run it okay so there we go so we successfully saved this object and then we retrieved it via the id we edited it and we saved it back in again so let's actually have a look at this object in the past dashboard so this is a post let's refresh let's filter object id equals we've got the object id there it is there's our little record that we've just edited so you can see the num comment is now one because we incremented it you can see the tags array now has updated post added to the end of it whereas initially it would have just had first post and welcome and i think the body was yes yeah, so the body is this is an updated message so that's how we can retrieve some data and how we can edit some data. Now let's look at how to delete some data. Let's go back into our JS bin. Now in PARS, there's two ways of kind of deleting or kind of removing information. One of them is you can actually just remove the field for that instance, for that row, so that column information. And you can do that with just the unset function. So let's do that here actually in the in the in the lowest level callback. There we've got there. So we can do unset. And let's do oh unset. Let's unset the num comments. Okay. I'm just going to do object.save. I'm not I'm not going to wait for it to call back. I'm just going to initiate the save here. So now it's clear. And then let me refresh the page to make sure. And now let's run. Okay, so now if I look for this ID in the dashboard, you can see the num comments is now undefined because we didn't set it to anything at all. We've unset that field completely. So the other way of kind of deleting information in PARS is you can actually destroy or delete an entire row. Now you can do that with the destroy function. So let's go here, so destroy. So you can do object.destroy and exactly the same as the save function, you can pass in some success and error handlers. But unlike the save function, we don't need to pass in a first parameter. There is no first parameter. It's just, it's just an object with success and error handlers. So it's like success function, object, error, function, object, error. Copy and paste some stuff into here. Oops. And then let's type successfully. So the object that gets returned on a destroy is a copy of the object that was destroyed. So 
conversely to what might make sense, if you actually search for the ID that I'm going to print out here, it won't exist in the database. But anyway, let's just print it out. Okay, here we go. So now let's refresh to make sure it's going to run the right code. Hit run. There we go. So saved, got edited, and now destroyed. So if I now look in the parse dashboard for this ID, it won't find anything.